Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and set up Hilt and Retrofit to make our first network call. If you missed it, I recommend you checking it out so you're up to speed. All the code is on GitHub, so feel free to check it out. There's a link in the description. And if you remember in the last episode, or if you saw it, we ran into uh, a little bit of an issue at the end of the episode here, where we had a difference between the network quote, the network data that we were receiving, and the data that we want to display to the user. So mainly what I'm talking about here is the fact that when we make a network call for a particular quote, we get back something that looks like this an object that has two fields in it, or a couple more, but these are the only two that we care for. And the values here, or the names of these variables are A and Q, and that stands for author and Q for quote. So that's a little silly, right? Because we get to render this UI here, which is real nice, but A and Q is not a really good term for, or variable names for programmers, right? We would prefer to work with something that looks more like this. A data class here called quote, it has display text, it has author, in this case it even has a little bit of an extra bit of information around if the user's favor did this quote before or not. So we're starting to blend network data and user data to come up with this idea of a domain layer, the domain data. In this episode, we're going to discuss how we can go from network to domain. We do so via a mapping layer. It's very popular. It's very powerful. This is a really good example as to how we can uplift from one to the other, make ends meet. And as we get started here, uh, feel free to subscribe if you're brand new, like the content to help me out a little bit. So here in our project you know, structure, we have a network package. Let's go ahead and update uh, or create a domain package inside of here. Uh, let's go ahead and create, sorry, we need one more package here. We're gonna call that package uh, mappers. And in here, we're going to put our quote mapper. This is just going to be a basic uh, data, or sorry, just a regular class here. So we're just gonna call this a quote mapper. Not too much uh, going on here, but we're going to name a function build from. I kind of like this because of the way that it um, the way that it reads when you start calling it. But we're going to take in the network quote and we're going to return our domain quote here. And we will say uh, return quote. We could say our display text is going to be the network quote dot Q. The author is going to be the network quote dot A. And for the time being, it's part of the reason I wanted to move it out. We're going to say is favorite equals false. Obviously, we need to do a better job with that, but we will take care of that in the future. Okay, cool. So we've created a very simple class here. We have one function, network data, returns, domain data. Great. This is our glue, and it really is this simple, right? In this case, it's nice because we're updating Q and A to be actual, you know, uh, uh, variables that we care to read and, and interpret and all that stuff. Here, as I said, we're going to blend in some additional information around user information. If they favorited stuff, we're not worrying about that for now. Since we added Hilt to this project in the last uh, episode, we can very easily reuse this quote mapper wherever we need via at inject constructor. We love that. All right. And the next question here is where is an appropriate place to actually do this mapping? And to me here, uh, I always like to do it a little bit lower, a little bit closer to uh, the networking layer, uh, just because you know we kind of want to get away from that ickiness of the API models and we want to get data into our domain layer as quickly as possible just to make our lives a little easier. So if you missed it, we do have a quote service here, which is our retrofit service to make an endpoint, uh, sorry, to make a network call to a particular endpoint. And we have our quote repository, that repository is used in a view model, so we have all the right parts here, but we'll see, sorry, we'll see inside of our service, we obviously need the networking information at this point, right? Um, but there are a few problems with this. First of all, get quote of the day for some reason returns a response of a list of network information. So I see two problems with this. One, a quote of the day should just be a single quote, right? I don't know why we have a list of them, but that's the way the API is structured. And two, we have network information here instead of domain information. So from our perspective, like the, the rest of the code's perspective, when we ask for a quote of the day, we just want a single quote in our domain you know, variant of that quote. We definitely don't want a list and we definitely don't want network data. So taking a look at where this is called, right? We can kind of actually do this mapping here. So instead of a network quote, what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, quote instead, right? Because that's what the return type we actually care for this function. 
And then we're going to need to do our mapping. Inside of uh, the constructor, we can just add in our quote mapper. It's literally that easy because we've already added in everything from Hilt. Uh, we just have our service coming to us. We now have our mapper. And now the thing we need to return here, uh, for now we're going to keep it nullable because the null case is going to cover the case where our network doesn't work. But uh, we'll obviously clean that up in the future. So let's be verbose about this and let's call this um, uh, uh, network quote, right? And that is a nullable uh, network quote, as we see there. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to return uh, if our network quote question mark dot let. Uh, we're going to want to use our mapper at this point. So we're going to say quote mapper dot build from it. And that is all good, right? Um, a little bit gross because we have a nullable quote here. We obviously want to do this a bit more functionally. We'll change that in a little bit, but we're asking our service to get the quote of the day. We're, at, we're referencing the body that is a nullable operation because if the network call fails for whatever reason, it's going to return null. In the happy case though, we are going to have a body. That body is a list of network data. So we're just gonna call dot first to get the first element in that array. We're also assuming <laughs> that there is an element in the array. Otherwise I believe, uh, actually we can change this very quickly, first or null. So in the event we get back a successful network call, but we get back nothing in the array, first or null will result in null. We won't actually end up crashing. So that's a little bit better. And then here we're just optionally saying, yep, if that does exist, let's run that through our mapper. And that at this point will return the app state dot quote, right? Because we're using that build from function, which returns to us our domain layer. Well, that's that's great because now when we, whenever we use this quote repository and specifically this get quote of the day, well, awesome. Now we have exactly what we're looking for. Go ahead and rerun things here, uh, but more specifically, when we take a look at the data type, right, it is that nullable uh, quote, which is exactly what we want. Uh, obviously, we want to change the nullability of it. But uh, for now, that's what we're looking for. So we do see our quote, we see the display text is exactly as it sounds here. Our author is this is favorite is false. Good. Everything is all good. Everything is ready. And so that's basically about it. <laughs> that is actually why we love to see the mapping layer, why, why the mapping layer is so helpful. It's really, in this case, it's very simple. In other cases, you can have mappers that encapsulate other mappers to do this, you know, kind of like cascading effect of mapping because, you know, in the real world, APIs get much more complex than this. You need, you know, oftentimes in order to pull together data for one screen, you're going to need to make multiple API calls. You're going to want to map all that da data down into domain information. And then sometimes the combination of that domain information is then like the overall state of your app or of your particular screen. Uh, so this is a really simple yet effective way to kind of display the, uh, the, the, the concept here. And I think what we can actually do, um, is update our UI to make sure everything is working, right? So we do have uh, this default state here inside of our app, but now we're actually making a network call here. So we can just simply uh, update our information and we should see the app actually react. So we're gonna say app state update. This provides to us the current state there. So we will just say it.copy and then we have a uh, a little variable in there. The quote of the day is going to be equal to the quote of the day response. This is unfortunately null. Uh, so let's just very quickly here wrap this in uh, quote of the day response question mark dot let then we will know that we can update it. All right. And there we have it inside of our fetch data, which we can probably say fetch quote of the day instead. Uh, we go ahead and make our network call if that is successful, as in it is non-null. We have the quote from the API, and we simply just update our state with that information. Probably get this all on one line here for being pretty. And as long as we update our uh, call site here, we... Perfect. We should... Let me just put a little bit of an artificial delay here as well, um, because... I just want to make sure we can see it when we end up running the, the app. But when we run the app here, we should see this old quote. And then after one and a half seconds and however long the network call takes, 
it will update. And just like that, we can kind of see everything kind of flicker, uh, you know, up, up, update, right? We make the API call, we get the correct information, we show it, and wow, there we have it. That is kind of coming together. So if you made it this far in the video, really appreciate a like, really appreciate, appreciate a sub. If it helped you out, let me know in the comments below. The next episode, we're, uh, well, we're definitely going to remove that. But otherwise, we should maybe build out uh, maybe some loading indicator, right? And maybe handling the network call a little bit better because right now we're just uh, praying to God that we get back the correct information. If not, it's null and we kind of just don't do anything. Maybe we implement a retry functionality. I don't know. We'll see whatever makes the most sense. But at the very least, we could tell people, hey, that's currently refreshing and here's the new data, uh, all that kind of stuff, handling some errors. So... Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.